this is our Outbreak Reasoning Quiz 2. And this will be over arithmetic and geometric sequences and also linear, which are related to arithmetic sequences, and exponential, which are related to geometric functions. Uh, ten problems. Which of the following real-world situations might be best modeled using a linear function? And what you're looking for is a situation that will be more or less in a straight line. So, like, if we, we can try this, like, Gloria's height in inches from her birth to age 20. So, what you're going to see for Gloria or anybody, a, a normal 20-year-old person, Okay, 10 years, 20 years. What is that height going to be? So Gloria, let's try to make the arithmetic easy. If she's going to grow to a full adult height, we say a 5 feet tall, and just say that's pretty short, but it's just going to be easier. So we'll say, well, let's do this. Let's make her 5 feet 10, which can be 70 inches tall. Okay. Well, what's going to happen is at birth, Glory is going to be maybe 20 inches. Is that how tall a newborn baby is? 21 to 24 inches. And then the baby's going to go, it's going to grow pretty fast. And then they're going to have, there's going to be a lull, then kind of a growth spurt until the teenage years. And then it's going to just kind of level off at age kind of 15 or 16 on. So really, this is probably not the greatest linear situation, but you got to compare the other things. Okay, the next one B, you have John, whose business doubles every five years. Well, you have one, two, three, doubles every year. So here's, okay, here's business. And then next year is going to double. Okay, and next year is going to double that. So we're going, so we're going up like, John's business is going up like this. Not a linear situation. Uh, C, Sally starts with a bank account with $50 and adds $25 to it each week. So Sally starts out with $50, and that's going to be at week zero, and then each week, okay, adding $25 to it. So week, uh, so, so there we are, starts out at week zero. $50, adds $25 next week to be $75. The following week adds that. And so you're going to have that continuing pattern. Okay, it's going to be a linear one. That's going to be best. Okay, uh, D, average temperature, just to eliminate everything, right? Average temperature in Fahrenheit for a year. So if your average Fahrenheit temperature ranges in from 90 down to 40, like it does in where I live in Texas, January through December. So you're going to start out with average cool temperature, go up towards a high temperature in the summertime, then go down like this. So is that going to be a linear looking situation? No, it's not. So really, Sally's bank account is going to be the best answer to that problem. Next, to which following sequences is geometric? Well, here's one where a lot of people were tricked because if you look at A, A really tricked a lot of people. Okay, if you set these up as N, A sub N, and we have five numbers there, one, two, three, four, five. We're looking here at choice A. Well, the values are going to be 1, 2, 4, 16, 32. Well, here to get from 1 to 2, that's going to be times 2. To get from 2 to 4, that's going to be times 2. But are we going to get to 4 to 6 by times 2? No, that's going to be times 4. And then we times 2 to get from 16 to uh, 32. So this is, if you just look at the first three terms, you say, oh yeah, ge look, geometric, geometric, geometric. But if you look on the fourth term here, that torpedoes it. Uh, this one here, this next one, 32, 24, 16, 8, looks like we're going down by 8 every time. That'll be an arithmetic sequence. This one right here, uh, 81, 27, I think that's going to be it. 
Yeah, this last one's going to go up by five every time. So that's going to be wrong. Okay, what you're looking at in this answer choice C, look at look at N, A sub N. So one, two, three, four, five. So 81, 27, 9, 3, 1. How do you get a geometric sequence? You take R is equal to A sub N divided by A sub N minus 1. So in this case, we can take uh, any of these two successive terms. Like we can take R is equal to this 1 divided by 3. And so that's going to apply for e you divide any of these successive terms by its prior term, you get one third, and that's going to be answer choice C. Next, three. Which following equations best matches the data in the table? Well, you have a, it looks like you do have a situation. You look at it, you're multiplying by four, by four, by four. So right now, you see, a, you see R is equal to 4. And that means that your only possible correct answers would be uh, where there is a 4 as a base. And you do not see that in D. D looks like it's maybe tricky. Now it's 4 times that would be a linear situation. And then also you can eliminate its choice B. So now you're really between A and, and uh, C. And what you can do for this is uh, you can just try these different rules. If you try uh, y, if we want to take if we want to take answer choice a, I'm going to put a over here. We put y equals four, and we want to take uh, to the zero minus one equals four to the negative one fourth which equals one-fourth. Is that right? No, we should get one. We don't get one-fourth. So A is not looking good. Uh, we can try it. We can try it again for, just to be sure, we can say in the one, Y equals four to the zero power, right? Because our one minus, excuse me, four to the one, minus 1 equals 4 to the 0 equals 1. No, we need 4. So A is not going to work for us. Let's try answer choice C. C, we have Y equals 4 to the 0 power. Well, that's going to be 1. Check. Y equals 4 to the first power equals 4. That checks out. Y equals 4 squared equals 16. Check. So we're looking at this pattern here. C is our correct answer for three. Four, which of the sequences uh, shown below indicates a common ratio of three? Now this is a little bit of a trick question in that um, a lot of people were, if you look at this, C, you have like plus three, and that's fine, but that is a common difference and not a common ratio. For this one here, D, we have a common ratio of negative 3, or common, I said common ratio, I mean common difference. So D is wrong. So you're between A and, and B. And if you want for B, say R is equal to a term by its, divided by its prior term. So we take like 3 divided by 9, we get a common ratio of 1 third. But we need a common ratio of 3. B is not right. Uh, if we take uh, a, we take, we say R is is going to be one divided by one third. Well, that's going to be three, and so if you multiply like one eighty first times three, you get one twenty seventh. One twenty seven times three is one ninth. One ninth times three is one third. One third times three is one. One times three is three, and so on. So A will be our correct answer for a common ratio of three. Five, for the arithmetic sequence shown with the first four terms, what would be the tenth term of the sequence? And, and really, you can set this up. This would be easy. You have n, a sub n. 
So you have one, two, three, four, five. You can just say, okay, negative one, negative 4.5. We have negative eight, negative 11.5. And what you know for the 10th term, okay, you're, you're gonna have an even numbered sequence. So you notice your whole numbers will be an odd and 10 will be even numbers. So anything, you you got to have one of these these 0.5 things to make this thing work. So just based on that alone, uh, B and C will be eliminated. Uh, you can just continue with the with the negative 3.5 if you want to. So subtract out 3.5. We're going to get negative 15. Subtract out another 3.5. For our sixth term, we get negative 18.5. Okay, our seventh term, I'll subtract out another 3.5. Uh, 18.5 minus 3.5 is going to be negative 22. And then we subtract out another, for our eighth term, another 3.5. We're going to have 22.0 minus 3.5, we're going to have negative 25.5, okay, which is going to eliminate that. And then 9 is going to be subtract 3.5. We're going to have negative 29. And then for a tenth term, we're going to subtract another 3.5 and get negative 32.5. 32.5. So that's going to be our answer choice C. One thing you can work out is for an explicit rule, n is equal to our first uh, term, which is going to be negative 1, plus negative, no, if I say n, I'm going to put a sub n. a sub n is equal to negative 1 plus. I'm going to say negative 3.5 times n minus 1. And so what that is, we have negative 1 plus negative 3.5 times 9. Okay, and so uh, negative 3.5 times 9. Let me see if it worked this out. So we get 45, and then 3 uh, times 9, that'll be 31. So we get 31, 31.5, must be negative 31.5, minus 1, we get negative 32.5, okay? Next, 6, write the first four terms of the geometric sequence. So uh, to do this, we can just say, okay, we have n, a sub n. And if we plug in 1 for the first term, we could say a sub 1 is equal to 64 times 2 to the power of 1 plus Right, n plus 1, n plus 1. So that's going to be 64 times 2 squared, or 64 times 4, which is going to be equal to 256. Okay. We already know how this is going. Um, I can try, we can try a sub 2. We're going to get 64 times 2 to the 2 plus 1, right? n plus 1. So we have 2 to the third power. It's going to be 64 times 8. And 64 times 8 is going to be this next one, 512. And so forth. So B is our correct answer for number 6.
Number seven, determine whether the relationship in the table shows a linear function. If so, write the function in y equals mx plus b form. And we have, we're apart on the x here, th plus two, right? One to three, three to five, five to seven. And so we're going up every time by 3.7 minus 2.3, which is going to be 1.4. And we're going up here on the x by three minus one or two. And we have a sim we have the same pattern, 1.4, 1.4, and we're going up by two every time on the x value. So our our m is going to be right hand over left, or the 1.4 divided by two. So 0 0.7 is going to be our slope. So uh, b is a trick answer. So we have to see what our answer is between a and c. Well, you can do a three-column process chart, as we've done in class a lot, x, y. So we know our slope is uh, going to be uh, 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 times 1 plus question mark is equal to our output value, which is 2.3. So what do you have to add to 0.7 to... To get 2.3, we have to add 1.6. So 1.6 is our y-intercept in this. And you can try 2, 2 times 0.7 times 2 plus 1.6. Does it equal, to, uh, in this case, 3.7? Well, you have 1 point, or you're going to put in 3. Okay, we need to put in 3 because we get... Okay, 0 0.7 times 3 plus 1.6, do we get 3.7? Let's try it out. So we get uh, 0 0.7 times 3 is 2.1 plus 1.6 is 3.7, check. That is our answer. Eight, use finite differences to write a function from the given data set. Well, already you know when time x is 0, you have your y-intercept. If you have y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form, you know that b, where y equals 0, is going to be $55. So that's, that's a is looking good. And then your finite differences, you're, you're going apart here on the left, 1 every time, right? Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. And on the right, you're going up. 35, okay, plus 35, and so on. So what is your answer going to be for this? M equals 35. So your answer is you're going to have, you have Y equals 35X plus 55. That's your choice A. Nine, state whether the function producing data table represents an exponential function. If so, write the common ratio in the function relating the variables. And this one I made a mistake. One of my students, uh, Terry, mentioned that these 1.6s are really supposed to be 1.5. So I'm just handwriting them now. A test maker's mistake. So, uh, if it, so we're looking for a common ratio, and if we divide these by each other, we get 360 divided by 240, and 540 divided by 360, and 810 divided by 540, what are we going to get? Well, going to our calculator. Oops. Eight ten divided by five forty. There we go. We get three over two, which is one point five decimalized. We'll get what was it? What was the next thing?
540 over 360. Let's look at that. Oops. Okay. 540 over 360. Three, three over two. Last one. 360 divided by 240. Three over two. So we should know, should be able to eliminate possibilities right now, right? This 1.5 is going to be, so we can eliminate D and A. We have a common ratio of 1.5. And so now we can just plug in. We can try our choice B. So we say, answer choice B, let's take uh, 240 times 1.5 to the zero power, well that's going to be 240 times 1 equals 240. So that's looking pretty good for, for answer choice B. We can try the next one here. Uh, 240 times 1.5 to the power of 1. We'll get 240 times 1.5 to the power of 1, which is going to be 360. So our answer choice correct answer choice is B. Last one, 10. Determine whether the relationship shows a linear exponential function and right function represented in the table. And so we can just kind of try, if we assume we're going up by one left on the right side, we say plus 12, right? 24 minus 12. But then if we take 48 minus 24, we get plus 24. So we are, and then we have plus 48. So really, we are not a linear function at this point. So we can cross out D. Uh, next it says neither exponential nor linear. Let's let's try exponential. So if we take 40 multiplied by 12 to get 24, 2. 40 multiplied by 24 to get 48, 2. 40 multiplied by 48 to get 96, 2. And finally, what do you multiply 96 by to get? 192, 2. So 2 is our base. So that would be consistent with either B or C. Now we can try these different things here. If we try answer choice B, we can say Y equals 6 times 2 to the power of 1. Well, what is, what is 2 to the power of 1? Well, that's going to be 2. So we get 6 times 2 equals 12. Okay, so far B is looking pretty good. Let's try uh, Y equals 6 times 2 squared. We're going to get 6 times 4, which equals 24. So again, B is looking good, and in fact, B is our correct answer. Anyway, that's it. Shouldn't have been that hard of a quiz. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.